Good morning, everybody, and welcome into our NBA TV studio here in Atlanta. Matt Weiner, 3D, Dennis Scott alongside, and uh, we are here at 347 a.m. Eastern Time for good reason. It appears, and I'm, I'm being cautious about this, but it, it appears the NBA is on a road back to regular season basketball sometime very soon. A, uh, a, I'm trying to do the math on this. About a 15-hour meeting or so between mm -hmm. players and ownership wrapped up a short while ago in New York City, after which it's been reported by multiple outlets that a tentative agreement has been reached on a uh, settlement to the lawsuit filed by players against ownership last week, which would lead to the end of, of the work stoppage and the NBA lockout. Again, that's being reported by several outlets. And moments ago, David Stern, the commissioner of the NBA, described that it as a, quote, tentative understanding, while Billy Hunter, the uh, former executive director of the Players Union, now of the uh, trade union, <laughs> trade association that exists, called it a tentative litigation settlement, speaking to the, uh, to the lawsuit settlement, because technically you can't have a, a labor negotiation Correct. without a union, and since the union no longer exists, you have to watch your terminology. Nonetheless, it looks like we're going to have basketball. It looks that way, sounds that way. One of the longest, 100, what, 49 days, 150 days since we're past 12 o'clock? Uh, who's counting? Who's counting, right? But the bottom line is good news is on the way, so it looks like we may have some basketball on Christmas Day. That's really all we have in terms of details at this point because no one has uh, released any, anything in terms of the framework of the agreement. Uh, when the two sides last met, they had more or less gotten to a 50-50 split of basketball-related mm -hmm. income. The sticking points were the so-called system issues, and in particular, six particular items. We don't know where any of those shook out at this point. Uh, and with that, and with the understanding that uh, the details have not been released yet, let's bring in David Aldridge from NBA.com. And, and DA, uh, what, if anything, have you heard of, of the agreement so far, or what might have finally gotten them over the hump? Well, I, I can tell you this. I mean, you know, someone who was involved in negotiations said that they they were just desperate to get something done, that both sides were genuinely engaged in trying to make a deal happen tonight uh, because everyone finally understood the urgency of getting uh, a real season, a, uh, a defined season in place, uh, and that had to happen uh, by the end of December. Nobody wanted a repeat of, of 99 with a 50 game season. Uh, you know, for all, you know, with all due respect to the Spurs, I think most people really did not feel like that was as legitimate as a season as you could have. And so, um, people wanted to have a more representative season and, you know, 72 games was the ideal. That obviously could not happen once the litigation began, but nobody wanted to start the litigation road. That just was not going to be a, a good outcome for anybody. I think everyone understood that once you went down that road, you were talking about the loss of a season and perhaps more. So uh, there was a, a genuine desire on the part of both sides to uh, to get this done. And, and you're right. I mean, the details are still not available, and they'll be coming out soon you know, we'll all be working the phones but um you know the, the important thing for nba fans to recognize is that basketball is going to be back and uh this thing is going to be over pretty soon well da you've been around the nba so long when you look at this process do you think this deal's getting done to save face with the fans christmas day right around the corner or we saw baseball get their deal done with a handshake with no uh difficulties uh you know, I, I'm, I'm always aware of their ex external pressures uh, brought about by other things and maybe other leagues, uh, three. Um, but I, I don't think baseball's making a deal had much to do with this. This was its own nightmare, <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, chock full of villains that n would never die, you know. So <laughs> um, they needed to get this done because they needed to get this done, and the season was going to, going to die otherwise. Um and so that's why that there was the, it created its own momentum. I think uh, you know the calendar created a certain momentum. Uh, the litigation created a certain momentum. I'm, I would I would venture to say, but I do think that there were. I think at at base, we've always operated under the premise, which I think is accurate, that that the league and David Stern were desperate to preserve Christmas Day 
because of the importance of Christmas Day to the league schedule and to the the implementation of uh, really opening day, if you think, uh, for, for the league. Uh, that's when casual fans really start to pay attention to the NBA. Uh, and so they, they wanted that to be on the calendar. And uh, the only way that could be on the calendar was for them to get something done this weekend. And uh, they got it done today, tonight, yesterday. Whatever the this day. morning. <laughs> this, this morning, I think we're still on. <laughs> Uh, DA, after the players filed their disclaimer of interest and effectively disbanded the Players Association, uh, you know, both sides stepped in with, with the, the rhetoric as they tend to do during negotiations, and David Stern called it uh, the, the nuclear winter was upon mm-hmm. us at that point. It, it seems as though that move and the resulting litigation filed the, the antitrust lawsuits c- kind of got things going, if nothing else, through back channels that led to the discussions earlier this week and to the the ongoing discussions tonight that led to this framework based on what you're hearing how much did the lawsuit and and the decision to disband the union get things going well i think you look i i, I think the, the the history of this lockout will be written in the next few days um i, I think that it did have an impact um because it, it did point you down a road that nobody wanted to go, really, other than maybe a couple of lawyers, <laughs> you know. Um, so I, I think that that, that helps. But again, I, I genuinely believe that even if there had been no lawsuit filed, you know, and we'll find out, we'll all find out together in the next few days what, what actually got things going. But I just, again, come back to the notion that if there was going to be a legitimate 2011 2012 season it had to start by christmas um otherwise you weren't going to have one that anybody would be happy with the players wouldn't be happy the league wouldn't be happy and so the calendar again i think was the biggest impetus to this just the fact that there was no more time if you wanted to have a season and i think there were enough people and we've talked about this obviously for the last two years <laughs> Uh, that there were teams that wanted to play. There were there were teams that legitimately wanted to play because they make money or because they felt like they had a chance to win a championship. And I think that the combination of those teams, and there were players, and we all know that, that most players wanted to play and would, wanted to take what, whatever deal was available to take uh, once you got past a certain time. Uh, and I think that, that the, their momentum from that and from the players really pushing their agents and including the the super seven agents i think that they had players who were pushing to get a deal done so all of those things combined to get this done i think more so than the litigation but i'm not going to sit here and tell you that the litigation had no impact Uh, my best understanding uh was that if the deal was done this weekend by monday certainly we're looking at probably a 66 game schedule uh starting Mm -hmm. on christmas day uh, flesh out how that schedule might look, if you would, including would All-Star Weekend continue with the date change, perhaps, and how deep into April would the playoffs ultimately begin? Well, I think what, we, what you're talking about, is it, it'll be a season. I, as far as I know, All-Star is going to go on. I, you know, again, that's one of the details that I really am not <laughs> aware of at this time. Um, now, I think what will happen, Matt, is that you're, you're going to have a a season. The regular season will probably be extended by a, a week, maybe ten days. It'll probably end uh, last week, of April. Uh, the playoffs will start soon after, and the, and the finals would end probably a week to ten days later than they would normally. So um, it, it, you're talking about pushing everything back a week, basically. And there's things that they can do with regard whether it's whether it's shortening the All Star actual break mm-hmm. itself. Uh, but, the, you know, you'll have three games and three nights. I don't know how many of those you'll have, but you'll have some. And uh, you'll have everything pushed back a week, basically. So um, the league, you know, uh, the league has a has the schedule. I mean, you know, I, they, they've been operating with different scenarios and different schedule lengths all along. Uh, I'm convinced that they have a 66-game schedule in in place but from my understanding is that everything gets pushed back a week to 10 days basically all right da we'll let you uh, get back to work i know you've got to uh, gather details as we we all do try to figure out the 
what's uh, in this framework, uh, if, if that's possible tonight, <laughs> or, or if uh, David Stern and Billy Hunter will have to go back to their constituencies first before they re release any details. DA, thank you as always. And uh, 3D, uh, again, closer to basketball, it, it appears 66 game schedule as a player. Does that seem like a legitimate season to you? Well, what we went you through, played through yeah, the 50 game well, season. Exactly. In 98, 99, we did that. Uh, to DA's point, what I remember is those back to back to backs. The knees, the ankles, everything was sore than normal. So if the guys haven't been taking care of their bodies, doing what they need to do, you may see a few more injuries than usual because when you're sitting at home, you can ride the bike, the treadmill, you can play pickup basketball all you want. Not until you get into an NBA game, the NBA intensity, guarding LeBron, guarding D-Wade, you know it's different than guarding your buddies or college buddies playing pickup basketball. That's when things really change. So it's going to be interesting to see how it unfolds. It is now uh, November 26th, if I'm not mistaken, uh, on the yep. calendar. If this deal is finished paperwork-wise or votes are taken and, and completed by Monday, uh, every estimate I've seen is it takes another seven days to, to dot the I's, cross the T's, for the, the union to reform itself, for right. one, to hold a vote for the, the ownership to go back to, to their owners, uh, get a majority of them to agree to the framework of the deal, to get the paperwork all done and signed. Then you're going to have a condensed free agency period, right. presumably, of no more than a week. How much of a training camp do you need to, to get ready to play regular season basketball? Well, I think the toughest part is the new faces. For the teams that bring in, say, four or five new guys, it may be a, a longer process because you have to learn a new system. Compared to the veteran teams that are bringing a lot of guys back, it all goes back to how have you been taking care of your body so you can come in running, not having to use those seven to ten days to get in shape. Those teams that are ready to go will get off to a better start.